Hey there, Realm Walkers. I'm Aaron Flynn, CEO here at Inflection Games. I wanted to give you all an important update regarding our early access launch for Nightingale. We mentioned in our last developer update that we keep you informed of our progress as we work towards addressing key feedback towards our game and ensuring that our early access launch lives up to expectations. After many discussions with our team, we've come to the decision to move our early access launch date to the fall of this year, which is spring if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. The reason for the release date shift is simple. The playtest process is working. The feedback we've been receiving from players has been invaluable, and the extra time will allow us to continue the progress we've been making while not jeopardizing the health of our team. There are a number of things we want to do with this extra time, from quality of life improvements like crafting bench animations, to tuning and progression and pacing, to continuing to work to make the realms feel as mystical and amazing as they can be. That said, this will still be an early access launch, so we want to keep the process of feedback and iteration between us and our community going even as we're live. Another thing we'll be doing with this time is upgrading to Unreal Engine 5.2. We were very excited by some of the updates that were shown off by Epic, but previously there wasn't a good time for us to fit this update in. While we aren't delaying specifically for this upgrade, we will have time now to do it, and that'll pass all those really cool new features on through Nightingale onto you, our community. Now, I understand this isn't necessarily the update you were looking for, and I really appreciate your patience as we continue the journey towards Nightingale. Over the next few months, we'll continue to prioritize playtesting and listening to community feedback, and we'll come back to you with an exact release date sometime later in the summer. I'll now hand it back to Steph and Maribel to talk a little bit more about what we're working on and show you some of the cool things we've added since we last talked. Thank you, Aaron. Since we've mentioned how valuable these playtests have been for us, we want to give you a little update on the next one. We previously mentioned that we were going to do a playtest at the end of May, but this has been bumped back a week or two just due to some technical hiccups. With that said, we have bumped it up from 7,000 invites to closer to 10,000 or 12,000 new people on top of the previous 2,000 or so. While this amount won't cover all of you who filled out the survey, as there were over 50,000 of you, it is a significant chunk. So make sure that you're checking your inbox and your spam over the next couple of weeks here. And if you want to know the exact day that the invites are being sent, make sure that you join our Discord. We'll put the link in the description. These invites will come from someone with the playnightingale.com domain name. So make sure that you're double checking to make sure that the invite is legitimate and safe. This next playtest will be the longest one to date as it will cover both two full weekends as well as all of the weekdays in between. We're hoping that this will let more playtesters get into later game content and give more feedback on those areas. As with previous playtests, this will be a closed one, so don't expect any videos or streams of it just yet, but we will try to share some insights when it's all completed and done. Now let's talk about some of the things that have been implemented in the game. Something that was frustrating the team for a few months was texture corruption. Although sometimes on screen it looked pretty actually, <laughs> it made the game feel a bit psychedelic. But that wasn't quite the intended aesthetic. And sometimes it snapped players out of the experience, which is something we do not want to do. Luckily, the workaround was just to close and relaunch the game, but obviously that was just a temporary solution. We didn't want that to be the way it was. But we're happy to say that this has been fixed and we haven't seen the issue since. The other major issue from this last playtest was that players were having an increased amount of graphic crashes. But we've been testing this out a lot internally to see what the cause was, and luckily our team has identified one of the problems. And we've already seen a 50 to 70% decrease in GPU crashes with this workaround. But we're working with external parties on all fronts, such as Epic and graphics card manufacturers, to fully resolve the issue because uh, it wasn't just one thing that was causing the GPU crashes, it was um, a blend of different factors. So now let me talk about some of the things that we've added to Nightingale. So in Nightingale you use workbenches for different things. You could craft things or you could refine certain materials. Workbenches themselves can be upgraded by placing compatible decorations nearby, and the bench contains a fixed amount of upgrade slots that the decorations take up. So unique combinations of decorations selected in this way create distinct traits for that bench. You could get an awesome buff due to these combinations, 
or you can even get consequences. We've also added later game benches that have increased capacity for upgrades. They have specific workbench traits that allows for higher tier items. They have faster refinements and new recipe unlocks. We also introduced environmental traits which can further buff or debuff your workbench. So for example, the bench can get a shelter trait if it has a roof overhead, which would in turn allow it to refine faster. Or your tool bench could get the whetstone trait if you place the appropriate decoration nearby, giving any bladed tool crafted on that bench a boost in damage. But as I said before, not all traits give you a positive effect. So you really have to think about how you're gonna set up your crafting area. So it's up to you as a player what setup works best for you and your playstyle. To improve your understanding of the state of your crafting bench at a glance, we also added new UI icons. So these will indicate how much fuel you have left, uh, your crafting setup, and how many slots, upgrade slots you've used. Creatures, one of my favorite things in the game. We've added a few um, and I'm so thrilled that I get to talk to you about these. Some have already been introduced, maybe shown a little bit, uh, some glimpses in our socials. For those of you that have missed it, here are um, some of the new creatures that we've added in the realms. We have the Hexamongrel. This is one of my favorites. And the Eliphas, a particular favorite of our art director, Neil Thompson, can now be found in the desert. A new addition to the Swamp Realm is the Liporidon. And if you're not a fan of bugs, trust me, I'm not either. <laughs> you could pause the video now and skip to the timestamp in the description. But for those of you that want to see the creepy crawlies, the Caparis, the Legionist and the Selkit can now be found in the desert. We'll be sharing some more information on these critters in the upcoming weeks on our socials, so make sure that you follow us. All the links will be in the description down below. And that's everything for this developer update. Thank you all so much once again for your patience and understanding. Game development isn't easy, but your enthusiasm and your support really makes a difference. We know you want to see more of Nightingale, so we have plenty of content planned for the coming months. So keep an eye on all of our channels, and we'll keep you up to date. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.